。好，大家好，我是陈世彪，从马来西亚拉曼大学也是市的的公司。我今天的的的讲座会呢，就是会讲到啊、uh, ，the wound healing properties of secretums from cytopeutics umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells， 就是。啊，能够用外泌体从啊脐带间中子细胞来医啊皮肤的问题啊，因为我的华语可能讲的不太标准批准呢，所以呢啊呃，我过后呢也是会用英文来接下去我的讲座会。So thank you everyone for welcoming me today. Ah,、uh, I am from Cytopeutics at Cytopeutics from Malaysia. We have approved stem cell products and a world-class GMP laboratory. We have a 16-year track record of clinical safety and efficacy, and some of our stem cell programs are also patented in the USA. In fact, we are Malaysia's first mesenchymal clinical and research use license issued by. Our Ministry of Health. The topic today focuses on the use of secretum that has been extracted from TNF alpha induced human umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells. We are glad to say that we published this paper、uh, at the big at the two months ago. Uh, and this is great credit to my research team,、uh, Tai Li Hui and Nick Shazana, who are my lead scientists. Essentially, we have taken human umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells and cultured them with tumor necrosis factor alpha to derive the secretum, from which, following. Specific LCMS acquisitions, we have been able to both quantify and qualify over two hundred and sixty proteins, including the top ten proteins that are found with the secretums, from which we were able to determine their function and prove their effectiveness in wound healing. So these are mesenchymal stem cells or mesenchymal stromal cells. In Malaysia, in cytopeutics, our mesenchymal stromal cells are obtained from the umbilical cord of a healthy newborn baby. We believe that there are differences between a healthy newborn or from an adult, and that from a healthy newborn. It is safer, without risk of cancer, as you might get from fetal or embryonic stem cells. Obtaining the stem cells from the umbilical cord also does no harm to the mother and the baby, and no extra procedure or risk to the donor. It is of course the youngest possible donor, and healthy, and because secretums. Are meant to be rich in growth factors. We believe that the umbilical cord of born baby would provide the richest growth factors. At Cytopeutics, we went a few steps further to obtain the umbilical cord stem cells. The patients, the donors, will have to give consent and are not able to sell their stem cells, and we are not able to buy them. Subsequently, upon full informed consent, they will ask to come in for a full health check for three generations, and the baby's genes are checked, and not just for the forty-six chromosomes, but seven hundred and seventy single nucleotide polymorphisms are also checked for mutations throughout storage. So let me repeat that again. We will be looking at the papa, mama, kong kong, po po, ye ye, nai nai, to make sure that there is no stroke, no heart disease, no diabetes, 
genetic inherited diseases, infections, or cancers before we would be able to accept the baby's stem cells for culture. We will follow doing that, uh, not just check for the 46 chromosomes, but unravel each chromosome right down to the double helix to expose the alphabets, the nucleotides. And if there was a spelling mistake, that spelling mistake might encode for a certain cancer. And so this next generation sequencing, NGS, to pick up single point genetic mutations are very expensive to do, but very important for us to look at. Subsequently, our stem cells have also been proven safe in FDA-appointed internationally accredited GLP research facilities where we run the stem cells through animal testing to find the right dosage, multiple dosing, to look at short-term organ damage or long-term organ damage, and also to see whether the stem cells will cause cancer. And of course, it didn't cause cancer. And finally, before we were approved uh, for our stem cells and our secretomes for use clinically, we will have to prove the safety in healthy people. And this was the first in Malaysia, phase 1A, use of clinical stem cells in research in healthy participants. And we injected the stem cells in men and women aged 30 years and above who are all healthy. Uh, none of them have any medical problems. And we followed everybody up for five years to show that during the five years, there was no complications or adverse events that occurred, including cancer, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, or any other hospitalizations, including COVID. None of our patients were hospitalized for COVID. And it was only after such prolonged um, clinical study animal study, genetic testing, and our government allowed us to legally manufacture the stem cells for clinical use. From there, we were able to derive the secretomes. In fact, there were 309 functional proteins secreted by the stem cells in both resting state and following induction. And this is very interesting. As you can see how the proteins cluster together following induction. We went further using the Fundrich version to identify the function of each of these proteins. Some of them have names, most of them have codes uh, to identify the proteins. And we found that a large number of the proteins were driven towards inflammation regulation. The next big one is extracellular matrix and tissue development. That's growth factors for tissue development and also collagen if we think about skin and hair and muscle and cartilage. And finally, about 6% is driven towards angiogenesis. These are for the induced stem cells. And we can actually further break down the classifications of each of these functions. For example, in inflammatory response, we found that many of the factors were driven towards this particular uh, important uh, processes that together is thought to make inflammation or reduce inflammation. There is inflammatory response, defense response, antimicrobial humoral response, regulation of receptor activity, and response to other organisms. On the other hand, there is also the humoral immune response, the tubal development, regulation of cell migration, immune system process, 
response to stimulus. And all of these are just part of that 85% of work done by the proteins and growth factors from our secretos. In fact, we realize that there are fundamental differences in both their effectiveness and their functions if we were to use uninduced stem cells or uninduced secretums as compared to induced stem cells and induced secretums. If a stem cell is uninduced, the secretums that it would secrete would be mainly towards stimulating new tissue growth, such as of bone, cartilage, muscle, including heart and nerves, promotion of growth of new healthy blood vessels, and removing old damaged cells and toxins, macrophage activity, as well as homeostasis. On the other hand, when they are induced, the secretomes that we could gather are targeted to reduce injury, such as occurring in infection, infarction, or cancer, through an inflammatory response, and to promote repair and recovery through the extracellular matrix development, and also to prevent further aggravation of inflammation. So, we now know what are the 300 proteins used for. But really, what we are concerned with is what are the top 10 proteins or top 20 proteins that we might find and use that as our criteria to assay and to be consistent in our secretum production. And in here, our top 10 proteins are actually ANG1, fibroblast growth factor beta, insulin growth factor 1, the cytokines interleukin 6 and interleukin 10, metallometaproteinase 13, which is important for atherosclerosis and coronary heart disease, PDGN, which is something that you would expect from PRP, platelet-rich plasma, but we find platelet-derived growth factors in our secretums, TSP2, PIMP1, and vascular endothelial growth factors. And there are significant differences in this, the levels of some of these factors based on whether they are induced or uninduced. For example, you find more ANG1 and um, more TSP2 in the uninduced secretum. And both of these are responsible for new blood vessel development. And generally, because we are probably going to shy away from more blood supply for most people, um, therefore, uh, we prefer to use induced secretums. Induced secretums, on the other hand, uh, will have higher levels of FGF and IGF and IL-10, uh, as well as VEGF and PDGF. So together, you can see that the reason why we would use an induced secretome for wound healing is because these are the, these are the factors that are elevated and which promotes wound healing. If on the other hand, we wanted to use secretomes to drive towards creation of more blood vessels, then we might use uninduced uh, stem cell secretomes. But here is a very interesting fact about the use of secretomes. People are more familiar with platelet-rich plasma, PRP. But do you know, and this is what we found out, that our secretomes contain six times more platelet-derived growth factors than PRP. In one paper, as an example that I brought up, from 50 mils of blood, from 50 mils of blood, it is possible to obtain 40 picograms per mil of PDGF from 50 mils of blood. But we found that our salivary secretums contain 200 and 70 picograms per mil of PDGF. So even when we compare to the usual amount of PRP, our secretum still contains six times more PDGF than PRP itself. 
So it's no wonder that when it's compared, uh, when used in wound or skin damage, uh, uh, you are likely to find a significant improvement. And I just want to show you our scratch test essay. So this is our creation of wrinkles or creation of wounds. And we followed up microscopically at zero hours, that's baseline, 24 hours and 48 hours later. Control means this uh, essay was added control DMEM, -E the usual condition media. And you can see that there is some attempt at healing, but not much significant healing. But when we use an induced secretum, you can see a significant difference in the closure of the wound at both 24 hours and 48 hours. We did a couple more, we did a few more, and some of the results and all of the results show that both induced secretum and uninduced secretum will hasten up or accelerate the wound closure, but it is the induced secretum that will do that a lot more. Indeed, because we did so many of these scratch essays, uh, and all of them coming up with very, very consistent results, we were able to also show, and this has been published as well, that in the induced, that's the red color bar, you have the fastest percentage of wound closure at both 24 hours and 48 hours. And this improvement is statistically significant compared to the uninduced secretum and compared to the induced, uh, to the control as well. In fact, we went on to show what are the growth factors again that mediated this accelerated wound healing. And it is the ANG1, the FGF beta, the IGF beta, and the PPGF beta. You might also see in all of these, the top 10 proteins, they are significantly different when we cultured the cells uh, and when we cultured the broth, the new, the media in which the secretomes are, 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 are making the, the, the difference. So in summary, I would like to say that induced secretomes harvested from human umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells is feasible. In Malaysia, the source of the secretome, which is the umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells, is equally important. We have found potent anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory action, uh, action from our secretomes, which contain over 300 proteins, including cytokines and growth factors. And we have demonstrated superior wound healing using our umbilical cord mesenchymal derived induced secretomes compared to uninduced secretomes and control. We're very pleased to share these results with you today. And of course, our next step uh, in this very early uh, foray into secretomes would be an animal study and hopefully followed by human clinical study. With that, I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.